In this exercise, we're going to work on the topic of depreciation. We're going to see a few examples under straight line depreciation, double declining balance, and units of production. So first of all, Shelley's Gym purchased new ellipticals, which would be equipment, for a total amount of $100,000. The equipment is expected to last five years, and it's going to have a residual value, or you can call it scrap or salvage value, of $10,000 at the end of that life. Usage of the equipment is tracked in miles, and the equipment in total is expected to last 2 million miles. So they break down for each year how many miles that it's going to be used during that year. This is an estimate, of course. Now, uh, we'll, we'll use that when we get to the units of production method. We don't need it for the first two methods. So let's take a look first here. We have a depreciation schedule set up for each of the various methods. We have straight line depreciation, first of all. Now we're going to start off with the beginning book value. The beginning book value is going to be the cost for year one. It's the entire $1 million cost. Now depreciation rate. What I am asking for here is a percentage. Even though we're not really going to use it for straight line, uh, we there's that's one way to calculate it, but I want to put the percentage here so we can use this for double declining balance as well. So the way to do this is by taking 100 percent divided by or, or 100 or 100 percent, whatever you want to do there, divided by the number of years, five years. That gives us 20 percent. That's going to be the same for every method. For, our, for every year. So we can actually just drag that formula down. It's going to be the same percentage for every year. Now for the depreciation expense, what we first need to figure out is how much do we want to depreciate? We're not going to depreciate the entire 100,000. Instead, we're only going to depreciate the 100,000 minus 10,000 because that remaining 10,000 is salvage value. So we're really only depreciating $90,000 and so we're going to take that and we're going to divide it over five years. This is the straight line method. So we're taking 90,000 divided by five years to get 18,000 per year. Now a straight line tells us that it's going to be the exact same amount every year. Now one thing I want to point out here. The other way to calculate this, if you want to use this 20%, is... If you take the depreciable cost, which is 100,000 minus 10,000, so if we take the 90,000 and multiply it by 20%, we get that same $18,000. So that's what's going on here. Now, the accumulated depreciation for year one, it's just going to be $18,000. But for year two, the, number, the amount goes up. It's the original 18,000 plus. This year is 18000 So essentially, we keep adding on $18,000 to that accumulated depreciation. Now, as we do that, our, our ending book value after the end of year one is going to be essentially the $100,000 minus the ending accumulated depreciation. So now we only have $82,000 left in book value, net book value. So every year, it's going to be that year's beginning book value minus that year's depreciation expense. Or the other way to think about it is that it's going to be $100,000 cost minus whatever the accumulated depreciation is at that point. So I'm just going to take $100,000 minus the $36,000 minus the $54,000. So you can see how this is working its way down. Oops, too many zeros there. So at the end, we're going to end up with $10,000 ending book value. Now the other thing, the beginning book value from any year is last year's ending book value. So it just carries forward to become this year's beginning book value. Straight line is pretty straightforward. But let's take a look at double declining balance. So here we're still going to start off with 
beginning book value. Now our depreciation rate for double declining balance is going to be double the straight line rate. So twice 20%, two times 20% is 40%. The rate itself stays the same for every year. Now the depreciation expense is not going to be the same. In fact, the way you calculate is be, by taking that year's beginning book value multiplied by the depreciation rate. So 100,000 multiplied by 40% gives us $40,000 in depreciable cost. I'm sorry, $40,000 in depreciation expense that first year. Now again, it's not going to be the same amount. Ending accumulated depreciation for year one is, of course, going to be that 40000 And now our ending book value is the beginning book value minus that year's depreciation. So this 60000 carries forward to become next year's beginning book value. Now, one thing to note here, with double declining balance, we did not subtract out the... Uh, salvage value. We don't need to, but we're going to consider it at the very end. We may need to make an adjustment. But for year two, we take the beginning book value multiplied by 40% again. That brings our accumulated depreciation up to 64000 And again, the ending book value is just that year's beginning book value minus that year's depreciation expense. So it's down to 36,000. We're going to go through that year, 36,000 multiplied by 40%. And of course, that means that the new accumulated depreciation is 78,400. It's just last year, 64,000 plus the 14,400 we added this year. So now we're down to $21,600 of ending book value, which carries forward to become the next year's beginning book value. We multiply it by 40%, and that tells us we are depreciating $8,640 more. So we're down to $12,960. Now our calculation that we carried forward, it would have been $12,960 multiplied by 40% brings us $5,184, which would give us an accumulated depreciation of $92,224, bringing our ending book value down to $7,776. The problem is we have now depreciated below the salvage value, which we do not want to do. So you can't just continue the calculation throughout this method. Instead, what you have to do is take a look at the ending book value as it gets closer to your, your salvage value of 10000 In year four, we had $12,960. We know there that we only have twenty nine sixty dollars left to depreciate. So that becomes a plug figure for that year's depreciation. We're no longer really doing the calculation. We're just plugging in 20 or 2960. That brings our ending book value right where we wanted it down to $10,000. So we finally get on to the units of production depreciation. Now in this case, we know our beginning book value is going to be $100,000. The depreciation rate is different here. It's not a percentage. It's a dollar amount per unit, in this case, per mile. So what we have to do here, similar to the straight line, we are taking the 100000 minus the $10,000 salvage value. So we have $90,000. We're taking that and we're dividing it by the total number of miles we estimate. So 90,000 divided by 2 million gives us 4.5 cents per mile. That's going to be our rate for each of the years. 
for the miles in that year. Now we have to go up and take a look at how the miles were used up over the years. 750,000 for year one. These should be um, numbers. 750,000, 600,000 for year two. 500,000 for year three. And interestingly, no miles were used during year four due to a gym renovation. And 150,000 miles were used in the final year. Now quickly, if you add those up, you'll notice you do come up with 2 million miles. So what we have to do each year is take the number of miles multiplied by the depreciation rate. So for every year, it's going to be rate multiplied by miles. And you can just drag that down. So the depreciation expense for year one is 33750 Each year, it's a different amount. If you go down to year four, notice that we didn't have any miles used. Therefore, we have no depreciation. Now, accumulated depreciation, just like before, year one is obviously the same as that depreciation. But we keep adding on as the years go by. It's accumulated. So we have the depreciation for each year. We have the ending accumulated depreciation. Now we just need the ending book value, which would again be the beginning book value minus that year's accumulate, or I'm sorry, minus that year's depreciation expense. And then we can just carry forward the last year's ending book value to become this year's beginning book value. So if we drag that formula down, the ending book value, again, we just created a formula, uh, B25, which is beginning book value, minus E25, which is that year's depreciation expense. And fortunately, our estimates for mile usage matched up with our expected total. So we ended up decreasing exactly down to $10,000 salvage value. So no adjustments are needed in the final year. Hopefully this has helped to clarify the depreciation calculations. We'll be talking about this topic a little more in some of the later sections. Thank you.